then the return instruction so it is similar to a jump instruction but it will pop out the content of the program counter from the stack and then the program counter will be loaded with that value so ret is loading the stack top uh, it is getting the content from the stack top and putting it into the program counter so that the program counter gets back the point to which it should return and execution continues that way. So, when you are writing a subroutine, so we are doing it like this. So, suppose this is the main program. So, after some time we are calling uh, a subroutine called sublevel. So, this is a call sublevel. So, this is a call to the subroutine. So, this is the uh, subroutine uh, body. So, it should this, this, there is a shift. So, this uh, bracket should be in this region. So, that is the subroutine will be there. So, after this sub level is over, there is a rate instruction. So, rate instruction will take it back to this instruction. So, there is an instruction just after the call. So, it will take it to this point. But for doing all these operations, uh, for particularly when you are using subroutines in a program, we have to be careful that the stack pointer is initialized to proper value. Otherwise, uh, this return address uh, will be uh, uh, when the process, when the processor will try to save the return address, it may inadvertently modify some of the RAM locations which are useful for the program. So, uh, uh, SP so by default this stack pointer is initialized to 0, 07 after the reset, that is same address as the register 7 of bank 0. Now, with each push operation. Uh, first PC is increased. So, uh, when, uh, when you are first doing the push operation, the program counter will be incremented. So, if you uh, if you look into this uh, um, uh, memory, so we remember that there is a register bank 0 has which is in the range from 0 to 7 and program counter is on also initialized to 7, fine, no, sorry no, not program counter, the stack pointer is initialized to 7. Now, if you are doing a call, so first this return value has to be saved onto the stack. So, return value will be saved in these two locations that is location uh, number 8 and location number 9. In these two locations, the program counter value will be saved. Now, if your program is using something uh, um, uh, meaningful, so it is doing something meaningful with these locations, then the, those contents will be lost. Okay? So, it is better that we initialize this uh, program uh, this stack pointer to some proper value. So, when using subroutines the stack uh, will be used to store the program counter. So, it is important to initialize the stack pointer. So, in many cases we will use this 2f hex as the stack pointer uh, value. Okay? So, because, because uh, after that normally we, uh, we do not have this uh, um, uh, register banks and all that. So, it is advisable that we put it at around 2f, two, two but in your this is this is just an advice. So, if you find that your program is using even this location, then you have to find out a suitable chunk of memory that can be used as stack and you have to initialize the stack pointer that way. And initializing stack pointer is very simple, move sp comma hash 2f hex in this particular case. Okay. So, next uh, we will see uh, an example of this subroutine. So, this suppose uh, we are writing a subroutine square. Okay? So, this square routine what it does is uh, uses uh, it actually squares the number stored in the accumulator and for that purpose it will use that multiplication instruction and mul a b. So, it will multiply a by b. Now, since b register is being used by the subroutine, so it is advisable that we first save the b register because the main program from where you are calling this square subroutine may be using uh, this b register also. So, we first save this, this b register, then we uh, use that b register to get a copy of a and then we multiply uh, by this uh, mul a b instruction. And at the end, the multiplication result is available in the A register. So, it is assumed that since uh, the multiplication result can be contained in 8 bits, okay, the numbers are small enough so that the result is uh, uh, contained in 8 bit. So, we can ignore the content of B register now. So, we use the pop B instruction so that this previous value of B is restored and then it will use the rate instruction to return. So, this is an 8 byte uh, program. So, this is uh, push b uh, is uh, 1 byte, 2 byte, 3 byte, 4 byte and this I think uh, some, uh, some, some, some instructions has got 2 bytes. Overall, it is an 8 byte program and execution requires 11 machine cycles. So, for the details of how these bytes and machine cycles are coming as we have noted in 8085 also, so you have to consult the user manual. 
to know the sizes of individual instructions and the number of machine cycles they take. Now, another way of uh, doing this uh, multiplication, uh, this uh, square operation is by another, this is another program square. So, it increments a, then moves the a comma at the rate a plus uh, p c. So, this will be, uh, so this table is located uh, just after the, uh, just after the program. So, you see that program counter uh, at this point program counter has uh, got a value which, which is pointing to the, the rate instruction. Now, if we are uh, having the value 0, then uh, increment a will have the value 1. So, this, this is the value 0. So, if the a value was 0, the return value is also 0. If a value was 1, then after increment, so it will become 2. So, this, uh, uh, this uh, the, the program counter value at this point suppose at this point the program counter value is a 1000. Okay. Then what happens is that since this rate uh, is a 2 byte instruction, so this, uh, this, uh, this table will be stored from location 1000, uh, sorry this uh, rate is a is 1 byte instruction. So, this uh, table will be stored from memory location 1000. So, memory location 1000 will have 1000 will get the value 0 then 1001 will get the value uh, 1, then 1002 will get the value 4. So, that way it will continue fine. Now, suppose the value that we want to square suppose a equal to say 2. So, we want to get the value 4. Okay. So, when this instruction uh, has been fetched, okay, so program counter value is equal to 1000 because that is the address of this rate instruction. So, with that 1000 we will be adding what? So, we will be adding the value. Uh, increment a, so a has become 3, so it, it will become 1003. Okay. So, 1003, so 1000, 1, 2, 3, so that is wrong actually, this rate instruction is 2 byte, so rate instruction is 2 byte, so this is actually 1002, oh, no sorry, 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 I am sorry, absolutely sorry. So, this is uh, rate instruction is 1 byte, so this is, uh, uh, this is uh, going to be uh, this uh, this address is going to be uh, thousand. This address is thousand, so this is one byte instruction. So my table will start at uh, thousand one. My table will start at thousand one. So this is thousand one. This is thousand two. This is thousand three. Fine. Now uh, what happens is that a equal to two. So a equal to two. So increment a will make a equal to three. Then uh, this is a plus pc, so 1000 plus 3, 1003. So, it will access the location 1003 and in 1003 you see you have got the value 4. So, it gets the square value 4. On the other hand, if the value suppose a is equal to 0, in that case the after increment a, a will become equal to 1. Now, it will be 1000 plus 1. So, it will be accessing this location 1001 which will get this 0. So, this way this program also will be computing the same uh, square but it has got, uh, uh, it, it is faster, the program is faster. You see that this requires 5 machine cycles compared to 11 machine cycles here because the multiplication instruction takes a number of machine cycles. So, uh, this way we can use uh, this program for uh, uh, getting uh, the, the multiplication, this uh, squaring done faster. Of course, uh, you, you can say that this is limited because we are just uh, going up to the value 9. So, 0 to 9, only those uh, squares can be computed by this program not beyond that. Okay. So, this is uh, another example. So, what it does is that it, uh, it, it program it, it will compute the square root of uh, value on port 3 and output the value on port 1. So, it will compute the square root. So, how is the, how is it, how will it do it? So, this is the main program. So, P 3 first of all we have to get the value from port 3. So, it says that the value available on port 3. Now, since we want to read the content of port 3, port 3 has to be configured as an input port. So, we have to output all 1 onto port 3 that we have seen in the port discussion. So, this, this initializes port 3 bits to be input and the next instruction it will read the content of this P3 register into A. Now, uh, we are clearing the bits 7 to 4 by ending with 0x, uh, 0x, 0f. So, this uh, you see that this 0 will turn off the um, the bits uh, 4 to 7 only 0 1 2 3 they will be there 
now we are calling this square root uh, program so this square root program so this will be uh, increment it, it, it will increment a and then this uh, it will be the move c a comma a at the rate pc so this way it computes the value depending upon the number so up to uh, up to uh, 9 so it has got the corresponding uh, digit that should come so if you are taking uh, that uh, lower order byte and then after that it is uh, outputting that number to a uh, onto the port p1 and then it is sjmp l1 so uh, sjmp loop so it will again come here get the next number and it will do continue with the uh, program so correctness of the program you can uh, you can verify but the operations are like that so this is typically to this is a, a, uh, just to show you how the subroutines can be written so this is a routine way we can write down the subroutine so why should we use subroutine so they will allow us to have structured assembly language program so we can divide the whole job into a uh, set of um, subroutines and that is useful for uh, making the program manageable and it saves code space because subroutines may be called several times in the say in the program for uh, doing uh, so we do not need to have so much of uh, space for every time if you want to repeat the same piece of code then the uh, space requirement of the program will be high. So an example of say delay routine so this is uh, how is, is it being done so this is uh, move uh, a comma 0 a hex so 0 a hex so a hex is moved onto the a register then we are outputting this a register value onto this p0 so this is uh, uh, so this p0 is getting the value so then actually this program so this is uh, the what this program does is so the if you look into the pattern uh, is a, a a so a is 10 so it is 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 so ideally this program is something like this that we have got this port p0 from which we have got this uh, leds connected okay so we have got this type of leds connected okay from uh, bit number 0 to bit number 7 and then this leds so they are actually so you want to blink the alternate leds so that is why the, that is what this program is doing so what it is what is it doing first it is taking the value uh, 00 uh, 0 a hex into a register and outputting the value to port 0 so alternate leds are turned on then we have to put a delay there okay so this routine is the will call the delay one so this will call this delay routine then it will complement this a register and then it will go back to this so when it complements then the leds which were off previously will be on now and those which were on previously will be off now so it will be doing like this now how this delay routine is working so r0 register is getting the value of ff hex that is uh, 255 and then we are decrementing jump on not 0 r0 here so r0 will be decremented and it will be jump it will be looping at this point till r0 becomes 0 for 255 cycles this will happen and then it will return so this puts a small delay into uh, this display so that it is uh, visible to the human eye and the total delay that is produced you can find out this uh, move r0 0 ffx this takes, or takes one cycle then this instruction djnz r0 here so it takes two cycles and that is repeated 255 times and so the plus the last return that takes two cycles to total altogether it takes 513 cycles on the other hand if you want for a if you want a larger delay then we can have another delay routine so here we have got r6 0 ffx then r7 0 ffx then djnz r7 here so this is uh, doing it here r once it is over so it we are doing a djnz r6 to back one so this is putting two delays okay r through r register pair r6 and r7 and total number of cycles you can compute uh, in a similar fashion so it is 130818 machine cycle so once you know uh, the crystal frequency so you can find out what is the actual delay that is produced by this routine but so this one has got much higher delay so next uh, so this is a long delay example so we have got this uh, green led then sjmp so you can just uh, go through this program and see that how this long delay is being used then we take another example where we can move a string from code memory to ram okay so this uh, dptr hash string so dptr uh, will get the uh, 
uh, we get a number from where this uh, string is told okay so this is the string so this string has got an address so when you say hash string the corresponding address gets loaded in uh, corresponding address will be coming here and dptr will get that address and r0 is we are loading how many characters are there so this is actually uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 characters so there are 16 characters so it is 1 0 hex and it is terminated with a null character here so we are saying that there are 16 characters then we clear the a register then move c a comma at the rate a plus dptr so dptr was pointing to this character t okay so in in terms of memory you can say that if uh, <coughs> if this is the memory and suppose from memory location 1000 we have got uh, these uh, characters stored okay so this is the character t this is the character h this is the character i s so it goes like this and it is ended with a zero so this is the string so when you execute say this instruction then dptr gets the value 1000 so dptr becomes equal to 1000 okay now if you look into say this instruction what it is saying is it is uh, a plus dptr so a value is 0 at this point so a plus dptr uh, so it will be accessing this location so that character will be moved to a so a will get the character t and jump on 0 to stop so if you have got this 0 then it will be ending so that is over otherwise otherwise it increments uh, r0 so it, it 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 gets the content of a register copied onto the location pointed to by r0 so r0 uh, r0 setting is so, sorry r0 is uh, 10 hex so it is uh, assumed that this uh, r0 will be pointing to the location where you really want to move the this is the 10 hex address so r0 is the r0 is pointing to this meaning that i want to move this string from this location to this location copy it into the ram so this is uh, move r at the rate r0 comma a so this uh, uh, this t character was there in a register so that will come to this location 10 then increment dptr so dptr value will be incremented then rg in increment r0 so r0 is also, also incremented then sjmp loop 1 so it will come back here so it will again clear sjmp loop 1 so it will be uh, it will be should not be here actually uh, yeah clear a is uh, yeah clear a yeah it, it should come here so now with this uh, dptr is now dptr value is now 1001 so with the dptr so this again that a will be added so that way it will become it will it will become 1001 so that it will be pointing to the next location so that way it will be getting the next uh, character into the a register and that character will be moving to the next location pointed to by r0 so the here we have incremented r0 so r0 is now pointing to the next location so the h character will be copied here so t character was copied there h character will be copied here so this way it goes on so finally so um, it will be um, uh, jump on 0 to stop when it reaches this 0 character so it will be uh, jumping to this stop and here at this point the program is an infinite is in an infinite loop so it is continually uh, sjmp stop so it is in an infinite loop at this point so we can use this type of program for uh, moving string from code memory to ram next we'll uh, look into another program so this is uh, outputting it is uh, setting this port 0 into input mode reading the value uh, from port 0 into a register and then it is putting the value of uh, value that is read in a into the p1 register so this basically copying the value coming in p0 p0 port to the p1 port okay from p0 port the value is copied into p1 port so you cannot directly transfer between p0 and p1 so do it via the a register next we uh, talk about a program that produces uh, 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 a square wave of duty cycle 50% so if i have got a square wave so it has got square wave is like this now this on period to off period so this is uh, if if i say that okay this is the uh, start time of of a period 
then this is the corresponding end time of a period. So, this is the time period t that we have. Now, in this time period, so duty cycle means the on time, the on time divided by time period. So, if I if I say 50 percent duty cycle, that means for half of the time the signal is, uh, is high and half of the time signal is low. You can have some other type of wave like say at this point the um, uh, signal is high and uh, maybe it uh, comes uh, down at this time it comes down and then it remains low for this much of time. Uh, say the wave is like this, say the wave is like this. So, here the duty cycle is much less because the wave is high for much less amount of time, but the time period is same. Okay. So, this way we can have different uh, uh, duty cycles. So, if we are trying to generate a wave of duty cycle 50 percent, then we can do it like this. So, we, we, we want to generate on port 1's bit number 2. So, complement port 1's bit number 2, a call delay. So, a call delay will be produce some delay there, then SJMP back. So, it will be coming back here or we can uh, do it like this we can do it explicit set and reset. Okay. So, so, we can set bit 1.2, then put a delay, then clear 1.2, then uh, again call delay and then SGMP back. So, here the, uh, uh, the difference is that uh, in the first case it depends whatever be the random value the port has. So, it will be complementing that value. So, we are not very sure about the phase of the signal at the beginning, but in the second case the phase of the signal is initially high and then it goes to low. So, that way uh, it, uh, that uh, the difference between the two cases otherwise they are same. Another example suppose we want to have make a duty cycle of 66 percent. Okay. So, if I put uh, the clock uh, the clock be high for uh, um, uh, two times and uh, two, uh, two time units if the clock is high then it should be low for one time unit. In that case you can get a duty cycle of 66 percent because now uh, we, this the on time is uh, say if the total time period is say sorry if the total time period is say um, uh, if the total time period is say 3 and then out of that for two time unit so we are uh, remaining at uh, uh, for two time unit we are remaining at high and for one time unit we are going to low. So, the signal is like this for two time unit it is high, then for one time unit it is low, two time unit is high, one time unit is low, then again it is going high for two time units, then it is becoming low. So, that way we can have it. So, this is basically the two third thing. So, if this is total is uh, say if this total is say um, uh, two, if this total is say three then we can have say up to this much. So, if this is say 3 out of that, so this much is 2 in terms of some time unit. So, we get a duty cycle of 66 percent. So, we how do we do it? We set this uh, port B's uh, port 1's bit number 2, then call the delay routine, then put 2 delays. As if there is a one call to the delay routine. So, if, we, if I assume that it produces a delay of one time unit, then I am giving two calls. So, I will get two delays, then clear that bit. So, it will become low and then I am putting a delay of one call, one unit. Okay. So, this a call delay. So, it will produce a delay of one unit for uh, that subroutine, the delay routine and then it will be SGMP back. So, it will come back to this point. Now, it will again set bit uh, to one point set bit uh, of port 1.2 and accordingly this uh, pattern will be generated. So, that is one way by which we can generate uh, delays and all that, but many times what happens is that for embedded applications you need some precise delay. For example, if you are employing this uh, 8051 microcontroller for, uh, uh, for de de designing one traffic light controlling system. So, then the traffic signals are to be on for certain periods of time. So, it, it is not proportional. So, some fixed amount. So, maybe 1 minute or 2 minute or 30 seconds something like that. So, but the value should uh, match with the exact clock. Okay. 
So, for those cases it is not possible to have this accurate delays by means of the software routines that we are looking into so far. So, we have to use some sort of hardware con timers for that purpose. So, 8051 has got built in timers they can be used either as timer or as counter and then uh, we can uh, produce some uh, specific delays using those routines using those uh, hardware. So, 8051 has got two timers counters uh, timer counter 0 and timer counter 1 and they can be used as uh, a timer it for time delay generation and uh, in that case the clock source is the internal crystal frequency of 8051. So, it will count time in terms of the internal crystal clock frequency. So, you, if you it is uh, you, if you once we know that crystal frequency, so you can find out like how how much value that timer should have. So, we will look into those calculations to produce some exact delays. So, that is one type of uh, utility. Other possibility is you can also use it as an event counter like you say if there is a conveyor belt onto which items are passing okay, and you want to make a count like how much uh, how many items have passed. Okay, so, for that purpose so every event so that can generate an external pulse and that external pulse may be counted by uh, this uh, timer counter module. So, in that case we have to configure uh, that uh, um, module as a counter and that pulse instead of coming from internal uh, crystal. So, it will come from from the uh, um, uh, it will come from the uh, this um, outside pin. So, so, this is the generic structure like we have got uh, this uh, timer 0. So, timer 0 uh, it is uh, connect it, so, we have got this T L 0 and T H 0. So, this T L 0 and t, so, these are the two registers that will hold the time value and we can set the initial value for the registers T H 0 and T L 0. Then we can start the timer when 8051 counts up. So, if you start the timer and then uh, so from that point onward, so once you start it, so it will start it will uh, start counting up. It the input will come from the internal system clock. So, system clock will give us the, the, the input. So, on that on that basis, so it will be counting it and when the register content will become 0, so it will set one output bit to denote that a timeout has occurred. So, based on that we can again take some decision to run some other piece of code or produce some uh, external signal for that purpose.